RSA is the Swiss army knife of asymmetric cryptography. It can do encryption, it can do signatures, and it can also do a key exchange. Let's talk about it. Remember, the goal of key exchanges is to establish a mutual shared secret on either side of the wire. And there's two ways to do it. One of those ways is RSA. That'll be the focus of this video. We're going to show you how we can use RSA for this green and blue user to establish a mutual shared secret, even though this red user is listening in on anything sent between these two users. Doing a key exchange with RSA simply takes advantage of RSA's ability to encrypt and decrypt. For this to work, we need one of these users to have an RSA asymmetric key pair. In this case, this is the blue user's public key, and this is the blue user's matching private key. We can use these keys to establish a shared secret. Here's how it works. The green user is going to randomly generate some sort of seed value. This is just an arbitrary set of ones and zeros that has been generated at random by the green user. Then the green user is going to take their peer's public key and encrypt that seed value. This will produce some sort of ciphertext. This ciphertext will then be sent across the wire. And of course, anybody listening in on the wire will be able to capture a copy of that ciphertext. But we're okay with this because the only way to take this and extract the original value is if you had the matching private key, which in theory only the blue user has. So the blue user will take their private key and decrypt that seed value. The result will be the exact identical value that the green user randomly generated in the first step. And now both parties have the same mutual shared secret. And they can use that shared secret to generate any amount of symmetric secret keys to do symmetric encryption or MAC to data sent on the wire between these two users. And since only the green and blue user had the same seed value, they're the only people that could have generated this exact set of secret keys, and therefore anything sent on the wire protected by these keys is only readable by the other peer. So that is how you can use the RSA algorithm to facilitate a key exchange. But before I let you go, there's something important I have to mention. Remember that on the wire, the only value that was protecting the encrypted seed value was this private key. Therefore, this private key must be kept secure forever. Because even if that private key is compromised years in the future, we can use that private key to decrypt anything sent in the past. If this red user gets a hold of this private key, they can take that private key and decrypt the seed value that was captured in the past and use the same math that the blue and green user used to generate those same secret keys. And if this red user has the same secret keys that was used to protect the data sent in the past between the blue and green user, that red user now has visibility into everything that was sent in the past. That is why this private key has to be kept secure forever. This defeats a concept in cryptography known as forward secrecy. The idea behind forward secrecy is anything secured with a particular set of keys will be assured to be secured indefinitely. But in the case of RSA, if someone gets a hold of this value, they can easily recreate the same symmetric keys which secured any data between the green and blue user. So RSA as a key exchange does not provide forward secrecy. But there is another key exchange algorithm you can use that does provide forward secrecy, and that algorithm is Diffie-Hellman, and we'll be talking about that next. As far as this lesson, the main takeaway is understanding how we can use RSA to facilitate doing a key exchange, and the fact that RSA does not provide forward secrecy. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.